Uh, Mari Mari Penyi, Mari Mari Lamien, which means hi, everybody, in Mapuzungung language from, the, from Chile, Mapuche language. Um, kia ora. Hope you're feeling well. In Chile, you always say, like an event, to say, ¿Cómo estamos? Yeah. And what do you answer? ¿Cómo estamos? Yeah. Loud from this side, not from that side. Okay, <laughs> this is your chance. This side, ¿Cómo estamos? Yeah. Fantastic. We're, we're on point. Um, well, listen... It's now we turn our place to Chilean Kiwi Experiences panel. Um, it really is my pleasure to introduce this amazing group of people on this panel. Um, for me, where does Chile fit for me? Um, I was 19 and I met my first Chilean family who were resettled um, via a Tahitian friend. And I was in the garden digging there in Hamilton and I, was, I met the matriarch of this family who said, dig gringo. <laughs> and there started my beautiful journey with Chile and in Spanish. Um, so that's 40 years now, and here I am. Spanish has been my home language for 26 years. Um, my wife is from Chile, and I have two Chiwi kids, um, Manu and Noah. So um, it's always interesting we think under the same sky, under the same stars, but Chile really grabbed me a long time ago. I was there in 1988 for the plebiscite where the no vote won, which led to elections, which then led to democratic times returning. Um, and I stood on the stage in front of 100, um, 500,000 people for the concierto del no. And that energy stays with me. And that showed me at that time, you know, Chile, New Zealand, and the struggle for inclusivity, fairness, and so on. Um, I'm still here 40 years later and committed to this. It's a beautiful job I have with the CAPES and our wonderful CAPES team. But um, many of you are friends, dear colleagues, so I just want to celebrate today what we're about and the CAPES bringing Aotearoa and New Zealand closer to the Asia Pacific and, and the contributions of so many of us here today. So let's just do a big round of applause for all of us. So to introduce um, this fine panel, I just need to check because we've got one person online. Yep waiting there. Um, first of all, the um, inimitable, the wonderful Maribel Marquez from, um, I will say Latin Collective, but she's a woman of so many worlds and we'll talk about it. So Maribel, come up on stage. Welcome Maribel. Um, Esteban Espinosa, a, a, a dear brother and mate over many years from ALAC, Aotearoa, Latin America, community incorporated from Auckland. Kia um, whereas um, Cody Gonzalez Makua, variously known as comedian, actor, writer, and super dad. I made that up, not him. Cody, where are you? Please welcome Cody. And um, we have Sara Reyes, who has done a pre recorded video of Sara as the New Zealand Trade and Enterprise Trade Commissioner. Um, and also another Chiwi, we'll hear from her soon. Um, Maria Jose Alvarez, MJ, where are you? Please welcome on MJ, she's the investment. She's the investment manager for WNT Ventures, and we'll find out more about that soon. Um, Javiera Otero on Zoom, who has been a participant in our Winds of Change program. Javiera, can you hear us? Bueno, gracias. And lastly, um, the Lion of the South came up from the very cold south, um, Nicolas Reyes from Hola Latino, Plains FM, Spanish language radio program. So um, what we'll do, we'll try and get through a quick series of questions, but do really want to open up for a dialogue because this is really about community connections and so on. So I was going to, yep, I don't want to stand up here and actually ask the questions, but I don't want to sit down because th this might be a block. Shall I just move it? Oh, God. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, no that could have been a big tragedy. Javier would have just come up here and beaten me up. <laughs> okay, so I'll stay up here. And then I'll sit down. All right, um, can we start? Um, Can you kind of, no, not really, because it's just, I'll just pop them up and down. Okay, Maribel, let's start with you. Um, 
you were resettled in New Zealand as, as a small child and have played a really leading role in promoting Chile and New Zealand and Latin American connections over so many years. Um, you've influenced so many young people as a Spanish language teacher, played a key role in sending out Mujeres in Aotearoa or Mia and the Latin Collective and a whole lot of other stuff, amazing stuff. So please give us a quick flavour. What's been a high point for you in developing and maintaining people-to-people -people connections between Chile and New Zealand? Uh, thank you for that. Uh, one high point. Ooh, how many? How long have you got? First of all, uh, tēnā koutou katoa nā mihi nui. Kia koutou. Uh, mari mari lang men, mari mari kampuche. My strength is not mine alone, it's everyone's story that is here. Um, so today I'm speaking with the strength of a group of, Latin, a group of Chileans that came in exile during the 70s under the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. I'm a teacher for 15 years. I grew up in Christchurch and growing up in Christchurch in the 80s was really difficult. Um, and, but it gave me the biggest uh, uh, gift, which was they lumped me in with the Māori Pacifica and that was awesome because I learnt their values and I learnt uh, their kōrero and I learnt their um, ways, which was great. Um, ko Ines Marquez Tokumama, you know, she's a cosechadora de sueños, uh, wahine toa, guerrillera and an educating in me, or educating me. So there are four things that stand out. When Mia happened, it was because there was a need. They asked for it, and we represented strongly. Lots of women, lots of voices. We did workshops, dance workshops, well-being workshops. We did a thing, uh, the Mia Latin Festival, which was amazing. Um, ten year, well, about eight years of showcasing our food, our dances, our culture. Um, and, you know, lots of women working together. And it finished, uh, kind of ended its cycle for 10 years. And it wasn't because we didn't find a need for it. It was because we were women and we were also mothers. We were also seeking our careers. And we were also trying to establish our voice and place here in New Zealand. Um, something about uh, Mia was that it was non-political. And so... You cannot go back in history or f in the future without touching politics. And so that's when the Latin Collective came. And we opened that up uh, because there was a need to collaborate, to contribute, to participate, not only in um, our own community authentically, but in Wellington and seeing that voice. So we had a mural that we designed, that we did with the amazing help of a muralista, uh, Alfonso Pajarito, who's part of the Brigada Ramona Parra. And that was a collaboration of all our voices of the migrant story, and it was amazing. Um, recently, uh, since uh, the Estallido Social, we have been a strength in uh, the Chileans, helping the Chileans come to Wellington to vote because they had to uh, not only take time off work, but they had to find the, the, the airfares to come. So we, we gave them a space to be, uh, to be in solidarity with us um, by giving them a, a plate of lentejas, a, pl you know, a drink, uh, a, a, a korero, just so we could be together. Um, I have um, done a lot of uh, work educationally. I've done, taken two trips to Chile, and we've gone over to um, experience what it is actually to be Chilean, or going to El Estadio Nacional and seeing a, a, a game of football from La Católica La U, mm. you know, with my rugby 15 boys that went and were like, oh, my goodness. We... Um, went rafting, we did um, community service in, in, you know, in the suburbs. Authentic connection and participation. We also, um, I've had the honour and privilege to work with uh, Vicky and Rachel um, being a, a bridge, a voice between Mapuche and Māori and uh, Vicky and Rachel do an amazing job with the Mapuche community in the south 
empowering women and empowering the, the voice of the indigenous, which is amazing. But, and this is what I'm going to leave on, the most important thing that stands out for me was when my uh, father-in-law got the big job and his first state visit was Michelle Bachelet. And so then I had to um, represent the Fano and government house to Michelle Bachelet with the weight of the history of my mum and with the hope of the future of us contributing, participating authentically, our voices together with my, you know, a vision for the future for our kids, my kids. And that's why community is super important for authentic engagement. Thank you. Yeah, when is tomorrow? And I just, just to come back to impact on so many of our kids, and I know my boys as well, like Tia, Tia Maribel, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you to argue that point. <laughs> um, no, but just to, to acknowledge that, because um, the, the influence is enormous. Um, so, Cholda, querida, um, Esteban, you were one of the founding members of Aotearoa Latin America Community, Inc., ALAC, as it's so widely known, more than 25 years ago. Um, can you briefly share some of the key achievements? Because Alec has been involved in so many things, social work, supporting new arrivals, family day, creative sector things. Can you just give us a, a feel for what you've done, but also where you see it heading in the future, given there's such a huge mix of both Chileans and Latin Americans in Aotearoa now? Hello, me escuchan? Yeah. Um, Gracias por la pregunta. Um, mira, eh, yo soy sobreviviente de la dictadura, eh, como todos deben saberlo. Eh, algunos de nosotros fuimos secuestrados, torturados durante el régimen militar. Yo llegué aquí en 1981, así que mi historia es la historia de los dinosaurios, donde todo era blanco y negro. Pero, so... Um, yeah, I just want to say um, thank you for the invitation. My story begins in the time of the dinosaurs. Um, and uh, perhaps I'm one of the oldest ones here. And, um, and uh, I just want to pay first tribute to some of those who have passed, uh, some of the uh, people who came earlier than me to Aotearoa um, and who are no longer with us, um, your family, and, uh, and, and some of the others. So first, respect um, to, to them and to the memory. Um, secondly, to all of those who are left behind, our families, our mothers, aunties, grandparents who were left uh, in the old country when we uh, had to leave um, home. And um, so yeah, 1981 was the year I arrived here um, as a, a victim of a, um, an atrocity. Um, without, we never received, um, at that time, there was very little recognition in New Zealand society around the issues of post-traumatic stress disorder or recovery of torture or anything like that. Actually, a lot of psychiatrists and doctors didn't know what was the consequences. It was an issue that was just beginning to be studied, mostly in Europe. So in the mid-80s, I met uh, lots of Chileans who had survived the the terror in Chile, and then later on the mid late 80s, met other Latin Americans that came to New Zealand um, with similar stories. Um, so in the late 80s, I finished off my studies in Massey University. I saw my um, ex-colleague from Massey had gone, but I wanted to say hello to him. Um, but they, they um, talked to me uh, about community development. I finished my degree as a social worker at the app. And, um, um, and, and a decision was made to conduct a study in, in the uh, stories of the first generation of Chileans that came to New Zealand. So that's around 1987, 1988. We presented that study at the first World 
um, conference of uh, mental health, uh, refugee mental health, here in the Victoria University. Um, and with that, we founded the um, Auckland Refugee Council Fairs uh, in Auckland, which was a coalition of refugee communities, which we all at the time agreed that, that the, the New Zealand government needed to take some responsibility about the well-being of those who were coming from places of conflict. So that took us to the next step, which was um, convincing um, Prime Minister Longhi to understand that, and he was very welcome in all that, uh, all that finding, and um, he then organized the Ministry of Health to set up the first um, mental health clinic for um, survivors of war and torture, which is called the Refugee Survivors Center, and it's based now in several cities of New Zealand. Uh, and that is the beginning of ALAC. That, uh, that's when we decided to organize ourselves uh, in a collective um, from a social service with the um, longest existed, I think, um, Latin American social service in Aotearoa. We don't just initially were Chileans, obviously. Now today we're serving um, the Colombian refugees that come and uh, other people that have immigrated, migrants, and so on. So we have uh, offices in Oakland, Hamilton, Wellington, and Nelson, and we also operate in Invercago. Um, some of the things that we have done over the years, we have, in course, in, um, mo uh, been involved in cultural development. Um, we organize large uh, cultural events on the 90s. Uh, today, for example, tonight, this is a screening of a, a short film that we just, uh, um, it's been nominated for the New Zealand Short Film Festival. Uh, it's called Tupac, King Tupac. Uh, and it's a three minutes um, animation of, uh, of a children's story, um, which is entirely made in Auckland. Um, and uh, some of the uh, artists involved are, are um, Tangata Fenua artists from um, um, the university where Claudio works. So we had collaboration with, um, with other groups and so on. So um, we have grown uh, into becoming a professional um, social service with psychology, social workers, and community workers. Um, and in the next, um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things, advertisement. Um, in 2015, we uh, published uh, 12 Doce Cielos, 12 Heavens, which is a collection of Maori poets uh, in Spanish and Tereo. Um, and, um, and very soon, we will be launching what we call the Escuela del Buen Vivir, the School of Well-Being. Um, it's, um, it's going to be the most revolutionary uh, social product that, um, that has n occurred in New Zealand, I think, uh, in, in regards of tools that families need for um, resettlement and, and well-being. So, yeah, that's the kind of stuff we'll be doing. Oh, kia ora. Yeah, kia ora. And that, so, I mean, those... <laughs> So do check out the um, King Tupac three-minute short film, short film festival. Kia ora, Esteban. Um, just to move on to, to Kori, you've done an amazing range of creative sector endeavours to date. Um, you're a comedian, actor, writer for TV shows. I did call you Super Dad. I don't know if Freddie might disagree, but... <laughs> um, what would you define as the essence of being Chilean and a Kiwi, and how does it drive your creative output? given you've got so many reference points. True. Uh, thank you for having me, by the way. Um, thanks for the hotel. I got some stuff in room service as well, so... Cool. I don't know whose credit card it is, but yeah, um, I'll pay back. Uh, I think the... I think I kind of growing up, like, the best of both worlds, like, obviously I'm from Chile, I was born and bred in Chile, in Chile, and um, uh, I think as, as Latinos, we're all, we're all quite passionate and we like to speak our mind and a lot of times it might get us into trouble, I reckon. Um, and the, so the Kiwi part of me is the part that goes, you yeah, chill out, Corey, like this. So, um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, it's just been growing up in a Chilean household, but um, with Kiwi mates. Uh, and now, you know, my daughter is, is half Chilean, half, ki half Kiwi. Um, so she's doing kind of the same. She's, um, she, I can see it, she's only seven, but she's very, um, very opinionative and, um, 
definitely takes after me and my parents. So, um, yeah, I think that's the yeah, it's the best of both worlds. It's a mix of kind of intense Latino and like chilled out Kiwi. Well, you've got chili up, chilled up Kiwi. Yeah, that's an alternative to saying Chiwi. Yeah, a chilled up Kiwi sounds good. Sounds like a T-shirt. Mm. All right. So kia ora, because I know there's a lot more, because I know you've done um, your, your, your act in Chile as well in Spanish. Oh, How did oh, that go? Horrific. <laughs> I, um, I did a documentary a couple of years ago where I went to, back to Santiago and did um, stand-up comedy in Spanish. And um, it's, on, you can, it's online, you can find it if you want to. Um, it's like the most painful 10 minutes of my life. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I... Um, I kind of translated every joke in English, like word for word, into Spanish, and it just doesn't work. It's yeah, it's um yeah. The Chilean humor is very um different to Kiwi humor, I think. You were so brave, and I think that was that, that definition for me of Chiwi, seeing you with this very laconic you, Kiwi dry humor, but in Spanish, and people just staring, going. Yeah, no one knows what Shortland Street is in, in Chile. <laughs> All right. Oh well, kia ora for that. That that sounds like a good. A good bounce point. Now let's hear from um, Sara Reyes, who's in Chile. She couldn't be with us live, um, but she has pre-recorded a video about being a Chiwi. So if we could play that, please. Hello and all everyone. My name is Sara Reyes, New Zealand's Trade Commissioner to Chile, Peru and Bolivia. So what was it like for me growing up in New Zealand as a Chilean Kiwi? Um, firstly, my parents uh, immigrated to New Zealand in the 70s as refugees. And when they arrived in New Zealand, they felt really welcomed. And so it was really important for them to feel integrated into the community. So my upbringing was a genuine Chiwi experience where I felt connected to both cultures uh, in all sorts of ways. So. Uh, my family used to do sports activities and community activities, um, both with Chileans and Kiwis. And so for me, uh, I was able to speak English and speak Spanish and merge both of my cultures. So when I think about a notable intersect between New Zealand and Chile, the one that comes to mind is the signing of the FTA agreement between both countries. At the time, I was studying at Auckland University, majoring in international business. And I thought, wow, this is going to offer an amazing opportunities for both of these countries to really grow together and forge even deeper relationships. For me personally, it meant that I could start building a career that linked both of my countries. Working for NZTE in Chile, I feel privileged that I can help contribute to both of our countries' economies, um, exporting New Zealand technologies and innovations to Chile. Uh, I really believe that that's making a difference in terms of productivities and efficiency gains for the Chilean market. So I feel like I'm living the dream in terms of contributing to both countries. I feel really privileged that the work I do is centred around continuing to build and deepen relationships between New Zealand and Chile. Uh, both cultures have a really high perception of each other. Chileans think the world of New Zealanders and vice versa. And so there are really strong people-to-people -people links that are being built on every day. The relationship between New Zealand and Chile is one of the oldest and strongest in Latin America. This year marks 50 years of that. I'm certain that the future is bright and prosperous for this relationship as we continue to build and strengthen our relationships and grow together. Sarita, yeah. Um, in terms of enduring connections, as you know, I know it's 40 years for me with Chile, but when I went to Chile in 1988, um, Sarita was my little mate, so I stayed with her grandparents. So it's been all that time we've been that close. The Reyes Ortega family, so I just want to acknowledge all of them and those who have passed within that family. But um, Grandma, Sarita's grandma is still alive, she's 92, and I get to see her in December, so the connections continue. All right, let's um, pass over to you, Maria Jose, and this is a nice one because Maria Jose, you came to New Zealand to do a master's in bioscience at the University of Auckland in 2016? Yep, and now support entrepreneurs and deep tech company, companies in New Zealand and, uh, and are an independent advisor to Startup Science, the seed accelerator and investment arm of the Chilean Ministry of Science, Technology, Knowledge and Information Innovation. Wow, that's a mouthful. 
amazing stuff. And, and so that what's really impressed me since 2016, that's six years, like you've done such a huge amount. So it's like this amazing roar of your younger generation. So I'm really amazed by how much you do. I don't know if you sleep very much, but um, given these roles among others, what are, what are the areas of work that really excite you about Chile New Zealand connections in the entrepreneurship and innovation space? We hear those words a lot, but what does it actually look like in reality? A lot of work there. Eh, kia ora everyone, hola, thank you for having me. Um, that was a mouthful of what I do, and it's one of the lenses that I do. Uh, but in more simple words, uh, I'm basically investing in science that is going to change the world. Um, that came from me being a scientist in Chile, founding my own company, and finding that navigating the science to commercialization pathway in Chile was really difficult. Uh, if you're a researcher, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I saw New Zealand as that pathway of uh, more evolved science commercialization and understanding what science can do for the future of our companies. So I moved here uh, and I've been working in venture capital, so actually helping deploying that capital into companies for the last almost seven years. I've set up two funds here in New Zealand. I'm currently managing 23 million, investing in science and engineering. And my work with startup science in Chile started two years ago. And that was when I realized that my perception of Chile being a lot more behind than New Zealand was actually completely backwards. In the time that I have been gone, science in Chile and the investment into commercializing science has increased insanely amounts. Um, I get to work with an amazing group uh, with the ministry, focusing on what are the types of innovations that we can invest in Chile to grow their economy. And I'm really proud of that work. And I think that that's, that's the lens that when we can enhance the, col the collaborations, I think that's where New Zealand needs to look more at Chile. Because we can learn a lot from how they have deployed their startup investment uh, and the, the mechanisms, not only from government, but also from private sector and universities, uh, emphasizing not only science communication, but also what other pathways besides academia scientists can pursue. So I, I play that role and I play it very proudly. Also, another hat that I wear here in New Zealand is I'm an executive council member for AgriTech New Zealand. So it's how do we put our agricultural sector uh, in the global stage. Uh, and a lot of that is how do we, New Zealand, look beyond just one part of the United States? Uh, we have a, a very short fly to the south of Chile, where I'm from, uh, and we have plenty of uh, companies based there. So how do we enhance that collaboration? and How do we facilitate uh, to go to trade, uh, but also to market landscape. Uh, Brazil is another example that NCT has been doing amazing work, and I think that there is a, a use case or, or a case to learn from that and expand from there. So uh, I'm, I'm here to be a bridge uh, in business and in innovation between both countries. Oh, cool. Could be a good discussion over an empanada at the end of the night with um, Rachel, Petero, and Vicky and, and the crew. So I encourage you to have a corridor. Yeah, thanks, MJ. Um, coming over to Javier Otero, who's with us on Zoom. Um, kia ora, can you hear me? Javier. Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, well, welcome back. And um, you were a participant in the Capes Winds of Change program in 2021 um, that we discussed in the previous panel that Chris was the founder of, wherever Chris is. I got to see you, but he may not be here now. Um, tell us what was your key learning experience in the program and how has it impacted your life, both personal and professional? Because I know it was a big experience for you, but you were also one of the Chileans based in New Zealand, labelled a Tiwi. Tell us more about it within yep. two or three minutes. Oh, I am from Chile, Villa Alemana, and I've been in New Zealand for seven years. Um, I hear about the program through the Embassy of Chile, which I'm very uh, grateful to hear about the program because it opened so many opportunities for me. So first of all, I met so many people like different like industries in yeah, different countries, like a lot of people that I've worked with, they were in, based in Chile and a lot of people that I've worked with as well, they were based in New Zealand. Um, we developed this project called The Nice Tourist, which is about um, environmental education. I'm not from a science background, but I think we were different people working in this called collaborative program. Um, it helps to kind of like have different perspectives on just like the environmental issues. So we carry on with the program uh, and we carry on with the project. Uh, we're still developing and also we have more people involved. So if you know anyone who is into environmental science or glacier tourism, please send them my way because we would love to hear from them. 
And also we are working on the pro in the project, but I am also a project coordinator for a company. I'm in the building cons construction industry. And in my role, I got involved more in sustainability in the in my in my job. So now maybe in the next few months I'm gonna become the sustainability manager. So and this is all thanks to the Winds of Change program because it gives me the encouragement to kind of like start um, scaling up in environmental science in things that I'm very passionate about. Oh great. Well, kia ora, and I know that it was a big experience in terms of the multidisciplinary approach. So having folks in the Winds of Change program, not just strictly science students or early career professionals, but people who might be from business backgrounds, even humanities, that think about mixed groups up. And that's both between here and Chile. So the program has 10 students in, in New Zealand, 10 Chiwis in New Zealand, and then 10 students in, in back in Chile. So we're in the third year of the program now. So do check it out online. Let's jump over now, and kia ora, Javiera, we'll jump over now to Nico, Nicolas, um, from the slightly cold south, and you're one of the two anchors of the Hola Latino show on Plains FM in Christchurch, and doing a great job. Um, given the range of people you've featured on your radio program and community initiatives you've been involved in, what kind of people and content do you see as being really, really critical to broadcast to people in New Zealand to increase their knowledge awareness and action related as much to Chile as to Latin America. Now, I know the program's in Spanish, but I know you get out in the community and you're doing community events and so on. So tell us what you think. Uh, yeah, thank you. Well, hola, uh, Mari Mari, kia ora. Thank you for having me. Um, yes, I'm one of the anchors of uh, Ola Latino Radio Show in Christchurch. The radio show is in Spanish and English. Our mission is to promote the Latin American culture uh, in New Zealand, uh, in Toronto, New Zealand, um, as much as possible, being so far away from my country. I started the radio show when I was only 15, so zero experience, and that's not something you can do in Chile. So yes, New Zealand is the place for, you know, opportunities. Um, I've been doing it for four years now, and I have made so many people, so many incredible people doing a lot of things in New Zealand. Um, and thanks to the show, I've been, I've had the chance to participate in a lot of events. Um, since we've been doing the show for over four years now, um, it's a volunteer radio show. It's family owned. My father is my co-host. He's um, my, hey, he's like my best friend. Like, I don't know if that makes me cool or it's like really sad. You tell me. Um, no, nah, but we get along really well. My mother uh, is the manager and my family has just like a really good relationship. And my parents lived in the United States before I was born. We moved to New Zealand, they were like, all right, we're not gonna go back to Chile for a long time because we wanna get a residency and we don't want you to forget your roots. So we started participating as volunteers until today uh, and as many Latino events as possible. And my sister arrived when she was um, like 10 years old. So um, I, I feel like I'm connected to Chile a lot more now than when I was in there because I didn't know what I was going to miss until I was in here. Um, with the amount of people that I have met with the radio show, um, uh, I've realized that besides the opportunities that obviously I've been giving and a lot of people have been given, there are a lot of things that um, people are doing, especially in the South Island, that a lot of people do not know that are happening. Like, I remember the first time that the New Zealand Latin Awards occurred. It, I, we found it like such an amazing, um, like such an amazing idea to help not just promote but also just congratulate everybody who was doing something for the Latino community so far away from uh, from their countries and not just Latino people but Kiwi people um, the Aotearoa community who also just enjoys the Latino culture. Um, now to answer the question, the with, with the broadcasting area, um, I think one of the most important things to broadcast is a lot more than just music, which Latino music, which is really awesome, it's making a big comeback uh, into mainstream media. Um, but I think it's a lot, it's really important for us to broadcast a lot more than just music. Although music, it's a great part of what makes us Latino. Um, it's also important to just teach folklore, um, history and legends. Um, 
because folklore can be much more than just Andean music, like music andina. It can be the way we talk, the food we eat, the literature we read, our traditions. Um, and folklore is just something um, that's connected to every Latino person, even if they don't know it. Um, like, even just folklore music. Uh, it's been mentioned a lot today, but I think the Gabriela Mistral book of poems uh, translated into English in Tereo, it's an amazing initiative, especially for children who can get interested into learning about um, Latin American literature um, at an early age, even if not, you know, into poems, they can still find the book in the library and just be like, wow, whoa, what is this? Um, and obviously they would not be able to do that if the book wasn't there. Um, and um, there's been other events happening, like a couple of years ago, have, um, South Media did an event for Pablo Neruda at Turanga Library in Krasich. Um And with the Latino, we've been able to participate in a lot of events, uh, sporting events, art events, music events. Um, most recently, we were celebrating the Chilean um, Independence Fiestas Patria in Christchurch, wow. and there's so many people doing um, amazing things in Christchurch, and our idea is to put those voices into the radio so can people can hear about them, people yeah. can know about them, put um, play the actual voices of the community mm. on, our pro on our podcast. What we always <laughs> say is we all somehow end up in Aotearoa, New Zealand, so we all have a story to tell. Mm. Oh, kia ora. Yeah. That, and I think that old saying is about sometimes to come home, you have to leave home. Yeah. And I, I think that's really true for all, all of us and very much from what everyone said. Okay, Matthew's holding his finger up, not in a rude way. I think that means one minute. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, thank you. Um, una pregunta. So we've got time for a rapid-fire question. Who wants to ask the crew a question? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Adriana Rincon. I'm from Colombia. Thank you for having me here. Um, it's really nice to listen to those sparring stories, not only for us as Latin Americans, but I think also for the Kiwi people uh, here today. My question is, how do you think um, we Latinos can uh, motivate or incorporate other Latinos uh, and also the Kiwi community um, to embrace our culture? I mean, how can we promote um, in a more integrative way, our culture um, to the Kiwis. So I think they can listen to more inspiring stories as you guys have shared with us today. So what do you think will be the initiative or the strategies we can use, not only us, but in general, yeah. Um, I think um, engaging with the area of community that you want to um, make an impact in or be a part of. Um, I know schools are open absolutely to authentic stories and to proper engagement. I know that um, sports teams too, um, it's about, um, and, and if, you, if you can't go alone, let's go together, you know. Look at, um, I find tremendous strength in our Pacifica community because they are migrants and they have been here um, a long time before us and they have amazing, um, you know, uh, programs and things like that. Um, working on identity and, and how do we uh, reflect that and, and what, how does that come out and, and what does it look like? Like we are the ones that can dictate this but we just need to con connect and, and we don't go alone, we go together if you need the help, so yeah. Uh, and I think utilizing all of the means uh, available, um, that means all of the new means, like social media, books, music, and so on. I, I was going to add, I, I think occupying the space that we have in everything we have, it's really important. Uh, as a community, not only as Chileans, but uh, for example, I'm the only Latin in venture capital in Oceania. Not even female or male, not like the only one. So part of my occupying the space is how do I amplify that for others? And how do I educate the community, my community, that not having more people like me is a problem? And when we're looking to the future, how do we include 
different perspectives into whatever the future of our communities look like. And I think emphasizing, for example, Corey's work, but it's also Chilean, or someone else, but it's also Colombian. You know, like waving the flag, I think that also helps to see that we don't need to be put in a box of just one type of thing, that we can be everywhere. I think I'm also making the most that we live in New Zealand, we live in a country where we're allowed to, you know, free speech is for everyone here, we can do anything, and um, yeah, just, just put it out there, and more often than not, people will embrace it, I think. Also, the more people participate in the events that are happening around, the more uh, traction they're going to get. Um, so even if it's something really small, like somebody reading a Spanish book at a local library, or somebody just posting on Facebook, like, hey, I'm going to be selling empanadas, come get some. Um, even if you don't go, just share the post, because those little things get traction in the community. Um, the community will appreciate it, and right now, I think Latino America is really strong in New Zealand. Everybody knows at least a little something about Latin America, so if you get out there and support the events that are happening, they're also going to be more visible for the wider audience. There is, there is also opportunity for breaking some of the stereotypes. Um, you know, I'm one of the things that it, because uh, I work with a lot of Colombian, a lot of Colombian as colleagues, but also as uh, clientele, and one of the things they all complain is that every time when they said, oh, I'm from Colombia, people immediately relate them to part of the dark story of Colombia. It's like us as well. You know, they will, will say from Chile, they say immediately Pinochet. So we need to educate and in, through the education, and I think it's a slow process as we go through, um, but it will take time, but I don't think it's impossible because more people know about Latin America now than what they knew 10 years ago or 20 years ago or when we came. Mm. You know? Five. Well, one, two. I'll have both. No. Um, I don't need it, actually. I've got a teacher voice. Um, but um, I also think following our, our tangata whenua with their pepeha. You know, saying your papa, saying where you come from and introducing yourself like that, you know, because that is strength. Oh, kia ora on those fine words let let's end this panel thanks so much